Hi guys, you very much welcome to you. Thank you so very much for joining me today on another super exciting episode of the show. It is Celebrity Zone and I like to call it your favorite celebrity show on television. My name is Funkeshi. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Okay guys, today I've got a great personality like, you know, I always like to say that I don't come on the show without having a great personality ready to join me on the show. So today guys, I'm someone very great is joining me on the show. He is a renowned polymath. He is an international speaker international preacher started preaching when he was very much young and started being you know being a motivational speaker even while he was young okay he is a, is an advisor to government he is a lot of things he's a very wonderful person and of course he is a social commentator you know if you need an advice you should always go to him and if i tell you the many the kind of people he's met in his life you are going to know that yes definitely he is a great personality joining me on the show today is the one and the very only dio israel hello sir hello from ken thank you it seems like you have my profile up on your head yes i wish i could take everything off hand <laughs> no. though but no 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so, so great to much. be on your show and yeah. I'm so proud of the work that you're doing. Thank you so very much. When there is where says that, guys, I'm blessed. When to say it's part of the work I'm doing, yeah, I'm blessed. How you doing, sir? I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm oh. blessed and highly favored. Thank you I'm so much. I'm just uh, shy, camera shy. No, 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 you've been on camera <laughs> since, you know, I don't... I, you started being on camera when? Like age um, 12, okay. You went on CNN at age 16 to yeah, be precise. Absolutely. So you can't be shy now. You might tell you the age now. Uh, I'm in my early 30s. Really? Yes. Guys, okay. I'm younger than you think. Really, yeah, yeah. you are. You are but I don't think it's about age, I believe yeah. it's about capacity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I've had 20 years plus of, of engagement yeah. in international development. Um, my first foreign trip was in 2001, mm -hmm. which is just about 18 years now, or 19 mm -hmm. years, 18 years now. Mm -hmm. And before I went on that international trip in Twaziland, I'd been involved in development work, you know, uh, with UNICEF Nigeria, far back as 1998, 99. Mm -hmm. I've worked with CLO for many years. So I believe that to the group of God, I've been grown over the years. Okay, for someone that lost his dad at early age, age 12, yeah? 11. 11, okay. And for you to be here today, and you didn't let that stop you. You started something great at a young age. You, you started an um, NGO. Yeah, I'm right, yeah? Absolutely. Started an NGO when you were very, very young. At yeah. what age? I think... About 9, 10. About 9, 10, even before your dad died. Yes. And even after your dad died, you didn't stop. You kept on pressing on. You helped your mom. You I, I, I stuff. think adversity is part of life, and okay. you must understand that. Um, you were about to say something. Excuse me. You were about to something that... But you won't call a mutual summer do do dear you are. But you won't call a while I am. I coco, I am coco, you are. Okay. You know, I won't call us a place. Some people say I coco, but you have a god never does see Banuja. But they say, for the bad you are, oh, Paolo, we are going to be a what in Cape Way or Masha J. Kaye, but just a while. I can't help because I don't know the song. So, Sometimes God tests your faith. Yes. We've all been there. So mm -hmm. for me, seeing my, my father died was painful. There are times today I wish my father was here. Okay. Uh, you know, when I tell you when you hear on TV and said so so and so's person's father and all of that, my father was a group captain in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. He served this country gallantly. He, you know, was trained globally uh, as, a, as, a, as a military man. Uh, but of course, he died when I was very young and I didn't get to spend enough time with mm -hmm. him. I wish it was here. There's a few things I would do differently if my father was here, or I would do better if my father was here in some areas. But I think, above all, God has been faithful. He's been a father to me. In my short years of living so far, I have achieved things that even if my father was here, I don't think that I would have achieved lesser. Uh, to the glory of God, I've met many world leaders, interacted, I've spoken at some of the highest forums in the world. I've met the Queen of England, invited to Buckingham Palace, have met, um, I was invited to the White House White Forum House, for Young yeah. African Leaders. Uh, I've spoken at the UN uh, a few times, Conference Room 4, I was part of the International Dialogue at the UN General Assembly, Twitter Center of Children, Ongas, mm -hmm. been live on CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, name them, Press TV, oh, no, 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 to no, the glory no, of no, God. No, so, yeah. I've, I've been able to, because I don't give an excuse of my adversity, Okay. I don't see my adversity as an excuse for me not to achieve my potential. Mm -hmm. I was born with a purpose, I was born with a talent, I was born with a gift, and the gift must find expression. Okay. And that's what I want young people to believe, that you were born with a seed, 
despite your challenges, you gotta keep going. You gotta keep going like nothing happened. You gotta keep fighting. You can't. There's no time for pity party. Okay. Life is too short. Okay, you, you said know. you were born with purpose, you were born with a gift, but you got to know that, you know, even at a very young age. Okay, and I, I we think have poverty a is, a, is, a, is, a, is a discoverer. You have to okay. discover yourself. Well, you said that I named you at the age of nine and your dad was still alive then. Yeah. So even this, despite the fact that your dad was in the army, in the force, yeah. would you say you were poor then? No, 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 not just really. Okay. Um, but also I was with my grandma at a while. Before my father died, I had been with my grandma. Uh, in the Butemeta. Okay. So I grew up around my grandmother in the Butemeta. And so part of the challenge was I'd seen a lot of poverty around us in the Butemeta. Mm-hmm. You understand? And I'd realized that, you know what, I have to be above this. I was made for more. I'm made for more. So when we were growing up in my grandmother's house in the Butemeta, I would always, you know, engage myself and open my mind. I would go to Oyimbo bus stop and read a vision magazine mm. and look at great stories of achievement of excellence of people mm. i will sit in church with people of timber and caliber mm. so i can associate myself and begin to learn from them mm. i think one of the things that helped me was books i was always okay. reading a lot okay. uh paul says i've come in the volumes of books that i've been reading of, written of me mm. i love reading i love books a lot so books took me into a whole totally different world reading took me into a world that was beyond what i had seen or experienced mm-hmm. and so i began to see different and i saw that life was beautiful i saw that life is beautiful life is resourceful there's so many opportunities in life and there's so much more i can achieve in life and so i started fighting for it my mother would force us to go to church make sure that we're in bible school digging deep faith clinic Sunday school. And so I was reading in the scriptures, for example, young people that were achieving greatness in the Bible, Mm -hmm. from Joash to Josiah, uh, you know, kings at a very young age in the Bible, (laughs) were doing valiantly. I read stories, for example, of Jephthah, who was rejected because he was a child of an alloc. And someday he began to invest in himself. Mm -hmm. He began to invest in himself. He began to focus on himself. He began to put a lot into himself. And guess what? Someday came. They came to call on him, the people that rejected mm-hmm. him. And so the lesson for me was, no matter the rejection, keep going. Mm. Keep going. Mm. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. The reality is that when you begin to produce results, people who have looked down on you will submit at your feet. It's very simple. Mm. I remember when I wanted to run for chairman in Lagos, when I local government. Okay. The, some of the leaders in the community said I was too young. I didn't have what it takes. I could not become chairman. You are at, you are what age then? This was just last year. Oh, okay. Two years ago. And they said you were too young. You said I was too young to be a chairman. After over 18 years in international development yeah. and, you know, doing a lot of work globally. Mm-hmm. And they said I was too young. So I smiled. I set up my team. I was at a company in the community. I started grassroots mobilization. Less than two months after that statement, they themselves called me and said, you need to be part of us because the way you're doing, you might as well even end up being the chairman. Mm-hmm. So they looked down on us in the first instance, but we then showed that we had everything, capacity, resources, Mm -hmm. skills, competence, and knowledge, and merit Mm -hmm. to be able to run that office. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, we didn't get there at that time because of internal party structures and decisions, but we have every capacity to be able to deliver dividends of democracy to to the people. And you know, that's part of what is driving us. And I believe that our time will come. And I very feeling strongly that 2019, Will be our time, and this election we would run by the grace of God, and okay. we will win. Okay, I was going to go God. there. Okay, I was <laughs> planning to go there towards the end of the show, but thank God you said it now. Okay, so you said you would run. What is that? Are you going to be running for? I am consulting. Spiritually, it's and before we know it, April is going already. Before we know it, the year will be very much at the end. It is you know? not that I do not know what I have the capacity for. Okay, I have the capacity to be in the House of Assembly. Mm-hmm. I have the capacity to be in the House of Representatives. I have the capacity to be a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I had studied that when I was young. I was a senator in the Children's mm, Parliament. Parliament. yeah. I served as a senator for five years in the Nigerian Children's Parliament. So we have the capacity. Okay. We have the capacity to run a state. Mm. Uh, there are many governors in Nigeria where governors reached at the 2027. Mm. And some of them didn't have the exposure that we have today at that time. So we have the capacity okay. to run for any office that we so desire yeah. by the grace of God. But capacity is not enough. Mm. So what is now important is where do the people in my community feel that I can serve them? Where do they need me to serve them? Mm. It's about service. It's not about ambition or aspiration. Mm. I don't have to be a politician. Yeah. 
As a matter of fact, I didn't want to run again. And people say to me, no, you can't say because you're comfortable and God has blessed you and forget the people. Mm -hmm. So it's like Nehemiah, he didn't the call. So the capacity is there. Okay. It's not saying where. You are the one I want to serve. I want to represent. Where do you need me to go? Mm -hmm. Where do you want to send me? Mm -hmm. So when my people tell me where they want me to go, I would jump and okay. fly. But you, you said you don't have to be a politician, but are you a politician? Can you I'm a technocrat in government. <laughs> it's been diplomatic. What does that mean? <laughs> no, I'm a technocrat. Technocrat in government. Can yes. you break it down for us? I'm a technocrat. I, 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 you know, that's, that's the simplest way I can say it. But I have you, very you strong interest. You're going to be taking our viewers right now to the dictionary. Term. Yes, I think so it's use a no, knowledge, knowledge is good. It's good for them to also go and research. <laughs> for the okay. young ones who are watching this, you should go and get your dictionary. Just Google technocrat. So I'm a technocrat. <laughs> okay. I'm not a politician. Okay. But I realize that for me to deliver the dividends of democracy to the mm -hmm. people, I need to use the instrument of politics. Mm -hmm. So that's literally what it is. So. Yeah. I'm not a politician. I'm not. My goal is not to be a career politician. Okay. I want to serve in any way that I can. Okay. I, my utmost goal is one day to become a UN Secretary General or the Commonwealth Secretary General. Mm. I want to serve nations, mm. not just my local community. Okay. You know, from childhood I've been serving nations. Yes. You, you know, are. so that's what I've been doing. That's what I'm okay. passionate about. So let's go a little bit back to your childhood. You know, um, just like I made it known earlier that at age, okay, you made it known rather that you started an NGO at yeah. nine. That's very young age. Okay, so tell me when you started, and your, I'm sure your mom saw that. She used to beat me. She used to beat the hell out of me. I was going to say, was she scared <laughs> of what you're going to become? She used to tear the document. They say, you just boy, go and face your books. She didn't understand what I had been designed to do okay. at that time and you won't blame me a lot of people do not know what you were designed to do at that young age it was just coming out of me it was just inside of me i was restless i'm still restless because there's a lot that i believe that god has devoted inside of me to achieve mm. and that's why i'm not scared of that because okay. the point is i'm going for a purpose until i finish the assignment i'm not going anywhere until you keep you know until you check everything out you understand there's, knows there's something i've been yeah. loaded it says mm. that there's holy thing inside of me you understand the treasure in Ethan vessel. Mm -hmm. So from when I was five, six, I'd been reading. Mm -hmm. I read articles, I read books, I read autobiographies. Mm -hmm. I was learning a lot about what was happening in the world and in the country in Nigeria. It was Abacha government as well. Mm -hmm. And so by getting into Abacha, I started getting involved in 1997. I became a worker in Redeem in 1998. I was mm -hmm. only a child mm -hmm. in 1998. And I became a worker. Like, like in 1998, I was doing my workers in training. Around that time, I've been getting involved from childhood. I had always wanted to do what my fathers could not mm, do. Mm. Okay, I'd so always so I wasn't going to wait until eighteen to become a worker. Mm. But since your mom didn't, didn't really, you know, see everything in you, and um, aside you reading and reading to gain more knowledge and all that, who was there anyone in particular that was pushing you forward? Not directly. There were people that I saw from afar. I saw Ghani when I wanted to become a lawyer. I wanted to be an human rights lawyer. So, because of Ghani and his pro democracy movement, I went to join URI Laws. Mm. I joined CLO. I joined CDHL. I used to go to, as a schoolboy, mm. you know, I saw my family father and I was early. I said, Uncle, you remember me. Well, there was a particular incident me and you had. When you, we had an event at this day dome in Creek Road. And Ghani, I wanted to ask a question. I was in my school uniform, I think it was 1999, December. And Chief Ghani Fawai said, Put down your hand. You can't ask questions. You can't even vote. In the election, I think it was 1998 before the okay. election. Okay. You know, you are not even old enough to vote, and I want to contribute to your democracy. <laughs> so, if you watch my interview on CNN, yes, yes, I Everybody mentioned that mentioned it, yeah. you know I, I could not contribute because I could not mm -hmm. vote. Yes, it was exactly. something that happened between me, Ganifa, and me, wow. and Femi Falano. Wow. I was talking about. So, imagine I'd been involved far okay. back as. 1997, 98. Okay, so talking about that interview on CNN, you were age 16. Yes, sir. And I saw how good you were. Even <laughs> the, the other lady was, you know, kind of train and she had lots of mannerisms, like, um, 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 but you were just eloquent and you are just speaking all through. So tell me, how did you gain that strength? Uh, uh, well, it was the first time you were on national TV, yeah? No, no, on CNN. Oh, actually. International TV. International, international. global international. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Before first. that, I'd done maybe local TVs in Nigeria. Yes, I think I did a TV or radio in Swaziland mm -hmm. and all of that. But internationally, yes, that, that was the first. Yeah. So that confidence, where did it come from? Um, I, I think for me, like I said, from childhood, I've, nothing scares me. Okay. I've just always been passionate about what I want to achieve. And, mm -hmm. you know, see, and that's what I teach young people. Yeah. Tenacity and consistency. Mm -hmm. You need about 10,000 hours of doing something to become a master of it. Okay. So, if you know you want to sing, start singing at the age of two. Mm. 
Encourage your child to start whatever you notice from them, encourage them. So by the time they are the age of 10, they have already become like a master. So Venus Williams, Serena Williams, they've been doing what they're doing since they were a kid. Michael Jackson was singing since he was a kid. Mm. So I had been doing before I came before CNN in 2002. I had been doing stuff locally, standing before leaders, asking questions from Ganifa and me from when I was 12, 13. Mm. And before then, I've been doing stuff even in my I had a first crusade at the age of nine or ten at Evans Square in the The video is also on YouTube. Yes. You understand? Good. And I've been doing that. Too. So if you are doing that over the years, over the years, over the years, mm -hmm. had prepared me. So one thing young people must learn is that you must start early. Start working on your talent, your gift. It's good to have a degree, but a degree is not enough. Mm -hmm. The world we're going to is not going to be the world of certificate. Yeah. Maybe certification mm. to certify the talent and the skills that you have. But it's going to be a world of skills and competence. Mm. A problem solving world. What problem are you able to solve? Not willing to solve, but do you have the capacity to solve? And that's the challenge we have in politics. We have a lot of people who are in public office who are competitive in position, but do not have the capacity to actually solve problems. Tammy Dyer in on this as well. What's been your message? <laughs> Excuse me. My message to the world leaders is that I just want the world leaders to appreciate children, to know that children are more important in a country. If you need good governance, if you involve children, you're going to have good governance. You're going to have a country full of stability, full of peace. Children have the message of peace in their heart. When you involve children in everything you do, everything will work well. And I'd like the world leaders to consider children participation to consider having a world children's parliament having children parliament in every country so that the voice of children can be heard i want to tell us what really you know makes a leader you know is, is it just about you being in the position and just being called a leader or what are the you know nitty gritties um, behind being a leader leadership is about service okay but there are different elements of this service. So first is you as a person. The qualities that you must possess. Communication skills, presentation skills, human relations skills, things like humility, things like honesty, things like transparency, things like accountability. But that's not enough. Okay. You can be honest, you can be you know, uh, accountable, you can be humble, you can be you know, kind. But if you actually cannot solve problems for people, I'm sorry, but you are not totally useful. Mm. Because the reality is that I don't just want a kind, honest, and humble man, you know, driving me on the plane, my pilot, yeah. if he doesn't have the skill to fly the plane. Exactly. <laughs> you <laughs> know, not, you, you get on the plane that. and you say, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael James. I'm going to be your pilot on this flight to... Addis Ababa. Okay. I do not have the competency <laughs> to fly the plane. I don't even know what the buttons are here for, but I'm a kind, honest, gentle, loving husband and father. Would you no, sit down on that plane? Anything, no. no. So you must have that. That's a standard prerequisite, yeah. non negotiable. Then the second level is now to be able to say, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I also have the competence to be able to manage people, manage resources, solve problems. I can look at, you know, the issues that we have in our society and find a solution to it. I want to commend the governors that we have had in Lagos, from Governor Achiwa Jubola Metinubu to Governor Akimu Miambode. Mm. They have looked at problems mm. and they provided solutions in their own capacity. Mm. There's an old man on Kano Street by Abdul Fah who lent our soap making, was in our soap making class. He even create make soap and sell in Kwara State. Mm. There's a young lady called Abimbola Esther. She's in Unilag now for my local government. She learned how to make bags. Everything she wears from the cap on her hair to the trainers on her leg mm. is made by her in Ankara design. Wow. I made them on the street selling Z, Izal, G, all of those things from what they learned in our vocational training. That's solving problems. And that is what leadership is about. Awesome. One would think that um, with everything that you've achieved right now, 
you've been to um, you worked with UNICEF initiative you've been to the White House you've been invited by Queen Elizabeth you've been everywhere even where our so-called leaders have not been okay so now everyone would think everything has, has always been you know, rosy and <laughs> smooth for you one a part of this show is okay we bring on celebrities to talk about their lives and most importantly to talk about the hurdles and the struggles they've gone through in life so now tell me after your dad died, how was the you know? How it was, was life? it was it was full of turmoil. Okay, you want to know fact, the experience. I went to six secondary schools. Do you know why? Six. I went to Lisha Grammar School. Six I did classes. Just as one there. Six secondary schools. I did just as one Lisha Grammar School. It was fine enough. They moved me to Colonial College, Kurodu. I was on boarding house for just as two. First semester and second semester at the time. First time. Second they increased time. boarding house fees. I moved from there to wow. uh, Government College, Eric Moore. Because we could know. Third time, and I began to be, I became a day student. I used to work from Majidun, GCI, okay. to Ibutemeta. Let me assume that is very far. I don't know where No, no, Ikorodu okay, to okay. Ibutemeta. Wow. I've walked this only Ikorodu road wow. at least 100 times in my entire life. Over 100 times wow. from during when I was in secondary school. I can walk it this way, walk it back this way. Wow. So you cannot walk with me on the road today because I walk very far. <laughs> <laughs> I did a guy like me. I did Ketusa at the job term. Hmm. And when I got to Jesus Stream, I wanted to move to Government College Eric Mo. I was there for Jesus Stream. This is one. And then they used to fight themselves there. Then my okay. mother sent us to Methodist High School. It's to keep you safe, yeah? <laughs> yes, to the glory of God. And that was a good part of me because mm. I then we had the privilege of studying in Victoria Island, Lagos. Wow. If you say you yeah, are <laughs> studying, I thought I went to MBHS in Victoria Island, dude. Okay. I thought in BI. <laughs> How many years did you spend there? <laughs> I think about two years or so. Okay. Yeah, but I went. I studied in VI, not you know, you know, a lack of course on a lot of course. Well, how were you able to keep up? You know, you changing schools and all that. It didn't affect your uh, just to, education. Just to focus. Wow. Just to focus. And so definitely, you were one kind of. I remember when I was in government college or even MB. Yeah. I would first and set up my mother's shop. In Agwegba High School, on the first of Agwegba, Niger Peko, it's now called Longford School, you know, in Boston, by Kano Street, Java Boston. My mother had a kiosk on the fence of the school where she was sending sandals and Ankara, okay. um, Thai and Dai, yeah. and Ikoko, the other one they used to bring from Shaki. Mm. My mother sold everything. At times she was selling Zobo, and when the Zobo does not finish, I will now carry it into a bouteille to go and sell and knock it on my head. Mm. So I had my own shares of mm. ups and now. Okay, but you were lucky to where, get scholarship to study. No, it was after I um I became one day commissioner for information. Yeah. Also because of tenacity and you know resilience. I was privileged to become a one day commissioner for information in Lagos State. <laughs> then Uncle Dilia Lake mm. and Ashwaji Bola met him who offered me scholarship wow. and to pay for my tuition, accommodation. I really, really I'm grateful to the Lagos State government. Mm. Um, for that support, in particular, Uncle Delia Lake and Achiwaji Bulame Chinebu, um, for that kind support. I am very grateful. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, after the tenor of Achiwaji, um, the scholarship wasn't necessarily uh, continued, mm-hmm. so I also had another challenge. Wow. When Achiwaji left, I had to pay particular school fees that particular year, and the scholarship was not renewed by the new administration. And so it was challenging to pay for my tuition at that mm. time. Mm. It was very challenging. Mm. As a matter of fact, my papers were about to expire and you could only renew it when you are paid for your tuition. So I had to begin to pressure the state government to, you know, please, there's a commitment that they will renew this scholarship mm. after the left. Uh, and so for a whole semester, I was locked out of school. I couldn't go to lectures. Wow. I had to sneak into school. I would wear hoodie and dress mm. disguise myself because for you to enter school in london you have to have your card mm. which will clear you that you have paid but if you have not paid you will have blocked that so you couldn't enter so i'll stay outside the school you bring a card for me outside i'll call one of my friends mm. i will now disguise and wear something different and just press the, somebody else's card and enter the school that was how i went to school for a whole semester, whole semester. because for me i don't take i don't give excuse mm. i don't like excuses i want to get the job done i have a couple of products and cds on my website www.dioisrael.com okay. and one of them is I will get the job done. Mm. You don't like, give excuse. Mm. You must do whatever it is within your power, legally and lawfully and morally right, 
to get the job done. Mm. Life does not celebrate those who give excuses. Mm. Don't tell me, you know, just do the job. Mm. You understand? Okay. So I, I had my own shares. So for all semester, I didn't even have money to pay for my tuition wow. or rent. Wow. <laughs> you understand at that time? Well, it, was, like, it was redeemed after. after uh, God made semester. way somewhere else. Glory. You understand? <laughs> and you know, we finished it. Mm. We finished well. Thankfully, and now you're God. just, you know, the. This celebrated Daya Israel. We right give now. God the glory. Okay, uh, this one is six sticky skeletons. Six sticky skeletons. Six sticky skeletons. Six sticky skeletons. <laughs> six sticky I got it there. Yes, kiki, kiki. Six sticky skeletons. <laughs> okay, another one. That's the first one. The, this one is she sees cheese. Like she sees cheese, like cheeseburger. She sees she cheese. cheese. She sees cheese. She sees cheese. She sees cheese. From Kessis cheese. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much once again for joining me on the show. Now, of course, I wish you the very best in your running. Um, no, in my service to the nation and to our country. Like that. In your service to the nation and to our country. Absolutely. I wish you the very best. And of course, in every other aspect of your life, in your and yours, I wish you the very best. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Time. And guys, keep watching Celebrity Zone here on Galaxy TV with the one and only Funky Ocean. Thank you very much. <laughs> and yes, guys, that's where I call it a day on today's episode of the show, Celebrity Zone. Thank you so very much for joining me today, guys. You've learned, learned a lot. I want to believe that. Yes, because I have learned a lot and I'm sure that I'm going to replay this episode over and over, over and over again. And you know, guys, like they say that, the Bible says that, you know, you don't hide a candle. Yeah. Don't put it under a shed or, you know, just let it explode and let everyone see the light. So, guys, make sure that that talent in you doesn't die. Don't keep it there. Just make it just explore and let the world know that what you're made of my name is funky Ash. until next week guys be safe and of course be everywhere yeah <laughs> thank you so much guys bye